Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette and the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-840-5334. You can listen to Corvette today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say, hey, Google or Alexa, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Be sure and visit the updated Corvette Today website. It's corvettetoday.com. You can also access everything there, including the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also join the Corvette Today Facebook group there and sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And if you like YouTube, you can subscribe to the Corvette Today YouTube channel. See all Corvette Today episodes on YouTube. And be sure and patronize our flagship sponsors of Corvette today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 different unique styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvettes. It's an amazing value, starting at only $23.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT111 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A E R O L A R R I.com, and use the promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Also, midenginecorvetteforum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. And a shout out to Corvette Forum and CanadianCorvetteForum.com, welcoming Corvette enthusiasts from around the world. It's time to bring you the latest Corvette news and headlines with my buddy Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. Keith is here every other week to keep us current and up to date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, welcome back to the show. I always look forward to April. April means springtime and we can get our Corvettes back out on the road. Yeah, so much fun stuff happening, too, in April. Of course, we got the bash coming up later this month. We're going to find out, hopefully, more E-Raid news. We're going to find out when the model year for 2024 will hopefully start. Any new options or upgrades or colors coming to the car, we'll see, hopefully, in real time as well. So, yeah, there's so much good stuff happening in April. We're ready to get to it. Absolutely right. And as a matter of fact, next week, we have a NCM bash preview coming up on Corvette today. Keith, let's start out the news section like we always do with a production update from the Bowling Green Assembly plant. So we're talking here, we were closed a week ago. It's always happens. We go through this closure, it's unexpected, we lay off for a week. But meanwhile, things are still happening behind the scenes. And then we usually come back and have a pretty good couple weeks after that, as they've had a chance to bank some of those supplies and parts and stuff. When we came back from this closure, production takes off. We are probably right around 28,500 stingrays. It's probably a little bit more once this podcast starts on Monday. But 28,500 stingrays for the 2023 model year. And that's just the regular produced stingrays. race we also have 3100 70th anniversaries hmm. so 31,600 stingrays we're showing so far for 2023 model year and we've still got several months to go so we're really excited about the production numbers for stingray and, and actually we had a very good week for z06 production as well with some new records set for the daily numbers Last Wednesday, we saw 46 Corvette Z06s built in a single day. Wow. That just blows my mind. That's a great number. It was 38 regular models and eight 70th anniversary editions. So if we could do those kinds of numbers sustained, that would make a lot of buyers happy. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. And I think sometimes they're able to do that number and then it'll fall back down into the high teens, maybe low 20s again. But we're keeping an eye on it. The Wednesday production was the last number we had before recording this. So we'll see how it closes out the week. Z06 production again, you get all excited about it and then you get bad news and then everybody's all glum and doom and gloom, but then you get good news again. So yeah. you, you get excited. And of course, we had some real good news with the Z06 allocation. Yeah. Tell me about what allocation everybody got last Thursday. So it was supposed to come in the week prior to that. 
let's step back. In fact, February was the last scheduled Z06 order cycle that was planned. Chevy told us about it three months in advance. They told us about it back in November that there was going to be one in February. Well, February came and went. There was no Z06 allocations. And then we had the cycle one for Stingray in March that went well for Stingray. And then for Z06, again, zero allocations. But there were some inklings that, oh, well, maybe it's going to actually come the following week. So it's a little bit out of cycle for what was planned. But yet Thursday morning, we called our dealers and they were all real happy because they did get numbers. It was the small dealers and large dealers that we spoke with that did get numbers. So that's real good there. The one thing that we didn't see was we did not see any Z07s that were granted to dealers. So Mm -hmm. it still looks like they're having some issues trying to reach those. But having that order cycle there coming for Z06s. The other thing too is this is most likely the final customer allocations for Z06 for the 2023 model year. Chevy had said all customer orders for Z06 must be in by 11.59 p.m. on April 4th, which is Tuesday. And if there are any allocations left over in April, they would be given out as dealer stock orders only. So by doing a dealer stock order, Chevy's not worried about any model year changeovers or rollovers with those orders. And of course, if you roll over a customer order, generally you're offering price protection as well. So by doing the dealer stock order, that kind of eliminates that. And then there are some dealers out there that said, if we get additional dealer stock orders in April, we're just going to build them to our customer specs. And we specifically heard that from Sioka, and we hope that some others follow along if that's the case and there is some allocations in April. But otherwise, it looks like these are the final customer allocations for 2023. And again, we're waiting to see when the model year starts and ends for 2023 and starts for the 2024. A lot of things up in the air right now. So we're just rolling with the changes and see what happens. Just like the REO Speedwagon song, Roll with the Changers. <laughs> also, Keith, GM Mexico posted a 375% increase in Corvette sales. Wow. Yeah, we're huge in Mexico, which translates to 19 cars, Steve. Oh, wow. I fed in there specifically that way because people really kind of get bent out of shape when talking about Corvette exports. Right. They think that all these should go to American customers first. But in the grand scheme, you're talking 19 cars to one market, which is the equivalent of about two, maybe two and a half hours of production for the Corvette assembly plant to build those cars. These numbers don't really hurt the American buyers all that much. And in fact, it puts the prestige of the Corvette into these other markets. It's good news for Mexico. They're selling the Corvette Z06 down there now. And in fact, if you recall, they're selling only the Z07 version of it. They can sell a few of these cars, make a little bit more money down there. But yet here in the United States market, we do see Z06s moving, although the Z07s are still highly constrained, but they're probably highly constrained there as well. Yeah. We just like to bring these kinds of point counterpoints when we can. 375% sales growth in Mexico. I know a lot of automakers would love to have that, but when you're talking 19 cars, you're not overwhelming the workers and Bowling Green to build those. Right. It's reality and perspective, right? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Also, Keith, a judge has granted a class action status to a GM eight-speed transmission lawsuit. Give us the backstory on this. Yeah, there's a couple of these lawsuits that are still kind of hanging around from the C7 era, most notably the defective wheels for Grand Sport Z06, and then this one on the eight-speed automatic transmission. The owners call it the Chevy Shake because what they experience, they, anything from hesitations to shake and shutters and clunks and hard shifts from this automatic transmission. So the judge, what they did was they granted class action status. There's 39 plaintiffs in 26 states that have all reported this problem. And it's not just Corvettes that are affected. There's actually over 800,000 of these eight-speed transmissions were sold during 2015 to 2019. And they went into Silverados, Camaros, Escalades, wow. the GMC Sierra, and a whole bunch of other GM vehicles that had the AL90 or the AL45 eight-speed transmissions. Where this goes, we don't know. We'll be watching it, obviously, and we'll see how it ends up. Unfortunately, these class action suits are needed because, you know, a lot of times manufacturers will have walk away from a problem and say, oh, well, we dealt with it on our next upgrade. Well, no, they had 800,000 of these out there and people have real problems and they can't get stuff fixed. They're back in the shop over and over and over. It's, it's a mess and we're hoping that the legal system is able to clean it up. Yeah. Keep us updated on that. That's for sure. Yeah, we'll do. Also, we now can download the 2023 Corvette brochure. I would love to have one in my hands, but downloading it is the next best thing, right? It is. I mean, for anybody that really doesn't have a 2023, I mean, the PDF's fine. It gives you all the information, all the pictures, the colors, the wheel options, some of the different performance options that you can add on the cars. For people like you that actually have a 2023, you're going to want the printed version. Check with your dealer. Some dealers will get like a case of them. They might only have 20 or 30 of them available. So they'll give them only to customers that buy a car. If you can't find one at your local dealer, generally the National Corvette Museum always gets them in. And in fact, they're pretty cheap when you do get them through the NCM there. 
park. Yeah. That's what I would do is I would look for those. And then if you can get them at the bash, hopefully they'll be at the bash, you can get them. And then you can walk around and get them signed by some of the staff that's there, you know, the GM engineers, Harlan and Taj and those guys. That always makes a unique collectible. And again, when you own the car yourself, you know, you have a 70th anniversary car. It's great to have that brochure to go along with it. Absolutely right. I love having those brochures and getting the signatures from all the guys on the team is a great idea. Thanks for that. Yep. Also, we have a few new additions to the Corvettes and the Z06s. First of all, the engine appearance package and the carbon fiber engine cover is now available for Stingray and Z06. Yeah, this is really great news, and it's been a long time coming. For the first couple of years of C8 production, customers could order that $995 ZZ3 engine appearance package, mm -hmm. and it included those two carbon fiber panels on each side of the engine, and then an LED lighting kit inside so that when you opened up the hatch, you know, you'd have a light shining down on it. Right. Back in January 2022, that vendor that provided those closeout panels got out of the business saying they were no longer in the composite business anymore. So it took over a year to get the supply back going again and that's exactly what it is it first showed up in the order guide for 2023 two weeks ago and then it's already now back on the build and price configurators for both stingray and z06 it's the same price for both cars 995 and it's the same rpo code which is the zz3 that's really great news there and again the engines they just look a little bit lacking without those closeout panels they really provide a nice way to fish it and in fact i had to go back on the z06 because none of the show cars have them if you go back to the z06 reveal at the peterson these pieces were actually on the cutaway car there not only were the closeout panels but that visible carbon fiber we call it the horse collar it basically sits right on top of the dual intakes of the z06 Six, right. And it looks really good. It's visible carbon fiber. It's got the beautiful C8 Corvette logo on it. So that's available now. Let me give you the, the price on that. That part number is 8464-3987. And the MSRP on that is $2195. A little expensive. They look great. And in fact, if you get those 500,000 My Chevy points for holding your Z06, that's a great thing to spend that on. And then the other thing that came for both Stingray and Z06, but again, this is only for the 2023 models, are these visible carbon fiber X braces that straddle the engine bay. Right. They not only look great, they're very functional because they add additional rigidity to the car. These X braces cost $28.95. The GM part number for those is 8498. 3921. You can order those through the Chevy Accessories page online or through your GM dealer parts counter. And I gave you that part number. We also have it on the blog. You can look it up and there's a number of resellers online that would have it as well, sometimes at a discount. It seems like we're getting additional visible carbon fiber parts. If we could just apply that to the Z07 package, the aero package, you know, we might really have something. Steve. Absolutely right. And if it's carbon fiber, it sounds good to me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Keith, let's take our first break. When we come back, Corvette Racing and Corvette Rumors are on deck here on Corvette Today. We all know that wheels make the car. Wheelcraft will help you take your Corvette to new levels. Wheelcraft offers the world's best PVD chrome finish available on the market. Available in bright chrome and black chrome. Wheelcraft nails it in both appearance and durability. And it comes with a five-year warranty against brake dust burns, pitting, peeling, and color delimination. Wheelcraft is also ISO certified. Whether you're having your wheels refinished or an exchange transaction, there is no core fee, no deposit, and you don't pay for the finished wheels until they are installed on your car. Wheelcraft in insists on complete satisfaction before you pay. Hear from one of our customers. I picked up a brochure at the National Corvette Museum and we took delivery of our new C8. I called Wheelcraft and in 15 minutes I ordered the new bright ice chrome wheels. Wheelcraft's follow-up and follow-through is superb. The wheels arrived on Sunday, installed on Monday, and cores were returned the same day. The wheels are the highest quality I've ever seen and they look awesome. Great prices, great customer service from initial contact to installation. Thanks, Dennis from Nashville. In many cases, Wheelcraft offers finished wheels on exchange or will apply this new finish to your wheels. Either way, Wheelcraft treats your wheels as their own. Visit our website at wheelcraft.com or call us at 833-840-5334. Arrive in style with Wheelcraft. The Radiator Grill Store offers C8 Corvette A-Pillar wind diffusers in beautiful carbon fiber or OEM gloss black that help reduce wind buffeting when a window is open. Easy installation and OEM fitment. Plus, get 10% off your total purchase with the promo code CT10 at radiatorgrillstore.com. When you want to buy a Corvette, or any Chevrolet for that matter, get yours from Hendrick Chevrolet Shawnee Mission located in Kansas City. Hendrick Chevrolet is the largest Corvette dealership and showroom in the Midwest. With a knowledgeable sales staff and Corvette sales specialists on hand, they'll help you build the Corvette of your dreams, and they ship nationwide. 
With Corvette certified master mechanics on site and a huge parts department with over 24,000 parts and $2 million in inventory, Hendrick Chevrolet is well equipped to take care of your every need. From sales to service to collision repair, Hendrick Chevrolet has you covered. Visit ChevyUSA.com or call 913-384-1550. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25 and every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. And now, back to the only current podcast on Corvettes, Corvette Today, with your host, Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call them 833-840-5334. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We keep you current and up-to-date on what's happening with Corvette. In the second segment, we always talk Corvette racing and Corvette rumors. First in the racing category, Keith, give us a breakdown on Corvette racing at Sebring. Yeah, the race happened before we actually had a chance to talk about it. Now this is our really first chance to do a recap. And this is another what-if race for Corvette Racing. Early on, the team was leading. Tommy Milner then reported a broken shock on the car. So after that nice few hours of leading the race and being right there in contention, it really dropped us to the back of the pack. And so the team had to really fight to get back there. With 50 minutes to go, we did our final pit stop. We were the first one out. So we were first in the cycle. We had Antonio Garcia, our closer at Sebring, ready to go there. What had happened was essentially we got punted twice off the course. We ended up finishing in fifth place overall. Not really what we wanted. Of course, Antonio wasn't real happy with the result afterwards, as you can imagine. Anything can happen there. So not the greatest result. Fifth place at Sebring. Corvette Racing's next race for IMSA will be April 15th at Long Beach. And then for the WEC team, their next race is Puerto Mayo in Portugal on April 16th. Wow. So that weekend, we'll have two different Corvette races to watch on each of those days. That's kind of the benefits of splitting the schedule is you get twice as many races to watch. Yeah, that'll be fun. Also, Jordan Taylor is preparing for his first NASCAR Cup race. Yeah, he actually had that. That was at Coda, Circuit of the Americas in Austin. Really a fun thing. You know, he qualified fourth as a rookie. They said it was like the best qualifying since like 2000 or 1999. I guess the guy who did that was also a former Corvette racing driver, Boris said. Jordan started fourth at NASCAR. It was a real slugfest. You know, any NASCAR race, unless you're a true fan, you just tune at the end because who knows what's going to happen during the race, but at the end is when it's all important. Unfortunately, we just had all these late yellows that continued to do the restart. They have to do a lap before they get the white flag and of course they'd always wreck on that first lap so they'd have to reset everything this happened a couple times and actually with these restarts jordan started moving up until the final restart he was 10th again going in that turn one at coda it's a killer and he got knocked around pretty bad and actually ended up finishing 24th overall so Ooh. fun race to watch fun to see jordan competing there hopefully we'll see some more road race ringers from corvette racing doing that more often in nascar because it's, it's fun to watch it's a great crossover for us to watch absolutely In the rumors category, Keith, TopSpeed.com is exploring the design of a Corvette sedan. Are we really going to get a Corvette sedan? That's the rumor. Corvette EV sedan coming in 2026, according to automotive forecasters. There's obviously been a lot of talk about this happening. So they put out this render and, you know, other than the front fascia that they grabbed from probably the Z06 there and the rear taillights from the car, this really could be anything. It's hard to really say, oh, wow, that looks very Corvette-ish on a four-door sedan. And they tried their best, I think. It's just a third-party rendering of what it could look like. We do know that the Corvette engineering team was moved over. This was several years ago, was moved under the EV. I always thought that was a good thing. You're playing with the latest tech. You've got all the money going in the development there. So why not try to grab some of that for Corvette? Right. We're looking at 2026, a few years away, but it kind of goes into our next story about the Porsche Taycan. Yeah, I guess that they're benchmarking the Porsche Taycan EV for the Corvette sedan, right? 
Yeah, exactly. So spy photographers captured GM engineers going in and out of the proving grounds with this Taycan Turbo S. The Taycan currently holds the lap record for electric cars at the Nürburgring. It's got Z06 performance, 0 to 60 in just 2.6 seconds hmm. with a 750 horsepower drivetrain. It's smoking fast. It was a year ago or so, I think, that there was a Taycan or Taycan, i really not up on my <laughs> EV pronunciation. I always want to call it Toucan, like Toucan Sam, but I, I know that's not. Yeah, I don't think Porsche would like that, buddy. <laughs> right. The Taycan was on the Hoonigans YouTube channel, and they raced it against Amelia's twin turbo Stingray, best of three kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's a very fast car with that instant torque that EVs have. And again, we see what Teslas do at the track with that energy that's just stored and then dumped immediately, and they can just go. It's just one of these things for people that want more performance and maybe have a family of four to cart around. An electric EV Corvette might just be the way to go. Well, if you want to take the family in the Corvette, I guess the EV or the sedan is the way to go for sure. Our final rumor, Keith, the Corvette engineering team was sighted in Indiana and Kentucky. What are they doing out there? Yeah, very interesting. So a reader sent us some photos and we actually had a couple quick videos. There was five cars in this group, including one that was fully wrapped in camo still. And that car with the camo actually had those special testing exhaust pipes coming out the rear, huh. which they do like the emissions testing on. In that group, there was the five cars. We also saw that one of those cars had the corner mounted exhaust. We think that it was a Z06 export model. And then the other three test cars all had the Z07 package. So there's where your Z07 wings are all going on to these pre-production 2024s. So to me, it looks like they were testing the full range of Z06. We do believe that these are 2024 production models because they have a different sticker on them. If they were 2023, they would actually have that CTF sticker that we all know. With it being 2024, they're pre-production models, so they use these VIN stickers instead. They were seen in Indiana and Lawrenceburg, which is over on the southeast corner. And then another reader caught them down in Bowling Green the next day. We're not sure what they're doing. It looks like they're just doing some validation, some testing, and getting ready for the 2024 model year. All right, that sounds good. Well, buddy, let's take our final break. When we come back, it's the lighter side of Corvette up next on Corvette Today. American Hydrocarbon is your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 or custom-made C4 for interior upgrades. American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. And now, we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products for the C8 Corvette, including front splitters, side skirts, engine appearance panels, engine fluid caps, door holders, trunk, and front props, and more. Plus, we now carry the C8 Speedline side skirts, along with the engine appearance package and the high wing. Give us a call at 813-476-5638. Visit our updated website at AmericanHydrocarbon.com or email us at pat at AmericanHydrocarbon.com Make your Corvette the car you've always wanted it to be with American Hydrocarbon. Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I want too, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. You're enjoying the only current podcast on Corvettes, Corvette Today. 
thanks once again for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Wheelcraft. Spring is here, and you want your Corvette to look its best. Dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels. Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or do a wheel exchange, and you get a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call them at 833-639-4231. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. Don't forget, if you want a deeper dive into any of the stories that Keith and I cover on the show, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com. In this final segment, we always talk about the lighter side of Corvette. Keith, I was interested to see that the Chevy Visualizer for the E-Ray added the full gloss black wheels as options. Exactly. Yeah. So one night I was just kicking back and maybe enjoying the consumption of an adult beverage or two, just building a couple of E-rays and the visualizer. One of my builds started taking a darker turn. I actually prefer brighter wheels. Yeah. I was building a Riptide blue car and I thought, well, let's put some black wheels on it, see what it looks like. Sure enough, here's these full gloss wheels that were added to the palette. Before, the only other black wheel was a carbon flash metallic, but it had the machine lip around it. So this is a full gloss black wheel that's now available to add on the visualizer, which again was a surprise because that gloss wheel was not in the leak that we had a few months back in December when we first learned about all this stuff that was going to be on the E-Ray. One of those wheels that we're still waiting on are the satin black wheels with the blue stripe around it. That was on the visualizer leak, but we're still kind of waiting for that to show up, hopefully, on the 2024 visualizer for E-Ray. It's always fun to find something new. It's just another option for Corvette owners. People really seem to like these E-Ray wheels. I really do like how they look. They really open up nicely and show a lot of the caliper color and your ceramic carbon brakes on the car as well. Always fun to add a new pair of shoes to a car. It's just another option. That sounds good. I like it. I like it. Also, the Corvette Stingray ran 191.7 miles per hour down the space shuttle runway. Wow, I need to get my car up to those kind of speeds. It's called the Johnny Bomber Proving Grounds at the Kennedy Space Center, and they're actually using the runway where the space shuttle used to land on. So it's three miles overall, but with their time to speed up and stop, they run a course that's about 2.7 miles. This was actually a Z51 Stingray, but it had the low profile spoiler. It ran 191.7 miles an hour before when Chevy was doing the launch of the 2020 Stingray, they had a test video that showed 194 miles an hour, but that was a non-Z51 version. That was a car that had just a rear deck that was all smooth. Mm -hmm. With the additional arrow, they always said the Stingray would go less, and we always thought it would be around 184, but this one, obviously, with the low-profile spoiler, was able to go over 190 with it. That would be a lot of fun just to be able to let your car wind up and really give it a chance to see what it could do. That'd be fun, buddy. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> also, Barry Jackson is going to offer E-Ray number one in auction coming up later this month in Palm Beach. Yeah, you know, it really tells us how close the E-Ray is to entering production and being, you know, an additional model for the Corvette if they're going to be offering the VIN 001 in April. And in fact, that's going to be happening April 15th. I think around 2 o'clock or so is when it's on the schedule. Okay. Like all these VIN 001 sales, the proceeds are donated 100% to charity. I think the sale of the first performance hybrid Corvette will benefit an organization called Donors Choose, whose mission is to help classrooms in need and give them tools and experience experiences for great education. Anytime you can help the kids, right? Anytime you can help the kids, it's a good thing. April 15th, first E-Ray will be sold. We all know who might be looking at it. We'll just wait and see what happens. We won't drop any names, Eric Hendrick, but I think he'll probably be there. Don't you think so? I've seen him there previously. I've seen him there when he's purchased a couple cars. I think the last one I saw him there was the Z06 convertible. Fun stuff there and looking forward to it. Yep, me too. Also, I love this next story, Keith. I am a Lamborghini fan since my teenage days. It was so cool to see the E-Ray just smoke a Lamborghini Huracan Evo and a Ferrari F8. I had a friend of mine ask, why the E-Ray? Why do you need all-wheel drive? Yeah. And that's why. This is why you want all-wheel drive on a sports car. The way it jumped out in front of the Ferrari F8 and that Hurricane Evo, just amazing. And again, it just is why the e-all-wheel drive is just so important. This car is pretty amazing. This video is amazing. This is a Haggerty video, so they had all these special effects in it and talking about how the cars all did something different. The Ferrari was really making up for its slower start and had that race been longer, it probably would have eventually caught and passed the E-Ray. 
But that Evo, on the other hand, was a mess. I mean, it struggled to find grip for the first 3.2 seconds or so. 060, while the E-Ray did it in 2.4. In fact, the E-Ray did it faster than the previous Z06 that they tested on the same track, which was 2.5. So again, I really want to see more of these challenges with the E-Ray and going up against these different cars. Of course, Godzilla, the Nissan would be fun to see. And more of these exotics out there, Porsches and stuff too. Just bring it now. I'm just ready for the E-Ray to dominate. Absolutely right. And our final story, Keith, this was so much fun because if you're a Final Four fan, you did the Final Four for Corvettes on Corvette Blogger. Yeah, well, this comes from Alex. He likes to throw these questions out there. Hey, guys, what do you think about this? So we assign the story to each of our writers. We have four writers. It's kind of like, well, what are your final four Corvettes for all these 70 years? And it's really tough when you start to whittle it down because you are going to be leaving some of your favorite cars off the list. The traditional ones, you know, the 53, the 63, 67. We have the ZR1s. We've got, the, of course, the C8 Z06. My list was a little different. I went with the 1957 Corvette Fuley. First time a 283 was offered. 283 cubic inches and 283 horsepower. You're getting that one for one horsepower to cubic inches. And also, this is the first year for the four speed transmission. So that's why I chose the 57. I chose the 63 Corvette Z06, the first car to really come with a track spec setup that you could order from the factory. Mm -hmm. Only built 199 of those. GM constantly reaches back to the past to present the future. And they did that with my next car, the 2004 Corvette Z06. I think the C5 Z06s are highly underrated. Uh, fantastic sports cars. Really, the last great driving car without all the nanny aids and stuff on them. I mean, it had some stuff there, but of course, it was also the first car that had a carbon fiber hood on it. Just a really great car. Then my final, my fourth choice might be a little controversial. I did not go C8 Z06. My final choice was the 2019 ZR1. Of course, you know, they built 25, 2600 of these cars. The prices just continue to go up on them as people seek out that last front engine design. 755 horsepower, that big engine sticking way up in the hood there. So that was my final four picks. I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but do you have some cars that you would name as your final four? Yeah, I was thinking about this as you were talking, and mine is pretty similar to yours. I would choose a 53 Corvette because that's the true C1 Corvette. I really love the 53, 54, and 55s. Then, naturally, the 63 split window, any version of the split window would be in my final four. Also, the 78 pace car. I love those 78 pace cars. Oh, yeah, good one. Absolutely. And then the C7 2019 ZR1, I'm still kicking myself for not getting one of those. Yeah, what a great car. And again, it's just the quintessential Corvette, you know? Yeah. That big wing on the back. I mean, that's what a lot of people remember. I think about kids these days seeing that car, and hopefully they'll grow up and say, man, someday I'm going to have a Corvette too. And that's the kind of car that I think the ZR1 really is. They only built so many of them. We all can't have one, but we could dream what they could be in the future. This was a fun exercise. I definitely enjoyed doing these. We've got three others to read on the site if you want to see what some of our other writers came up with. Awesome. That's great. Well, buddy, thanks for being on Corvette today. We will talk in two weeks and actually our next news and headline show starts year number four for corvette today wow that's probably what number 156 or so episode 156 157 wow unbelievable well good job steve hey everybody we appreciate you tuning in listening and if we see you out on the road keep waving thanks for listening to corvette today and please be sure to tell your family friends and other corvette enthusiasts about the corvette today podcast and thanks to our sponsors wheelcraft want to dress up your corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels visit wheelcraft.com to learn about their advanced pvd chrome finishing they can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models and it comes with a five-year warranty visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-840-5334 American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com, True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels. Get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. And Hendrick Chevrolet in Kansas City at ChevyUSA.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.